following up with the previous video, in this one, we're going to create the several forms for user to update the gig details based on the step they are working on. So let's open our F view gigs edit. All right. So right now, edit just display this one. So I'm going to remove it and open new. I wanted to highlight everything in here, copy and paste into the edit page. Now there are a couple of things that we're going to do here, but first let's hit save and let's go back to our browser. Make sure that you are inside here, hit refresh. All right, first it's gonna say the categories doesn't find it. So let's quickly go into controller, gigs application, sorry, gig controller. And we're gonna copy this one, copy and put it inside the edit. All right, hit save. Because that we know when you go into gig slot, gig id slot edit, it's gonna execute the edit function. So from here, we're gonna get the categories from the database and display it in the front end. Okay, should be alright now. Hit save. Okay, cool. But um, we already select the design for this gig, but somehow it didn't select that. So let's quickly fix it. So inside our edit here, uh, just make here, make commerce, and we're gonna say selected. And we're gonna pass it gig.category.id. All right, hit save, and go here, refresh. Hey, it's like the design. Awesome. Now, here you can imagine as we're going to add more form for every single step, this one is just a step one, all right? And we have this sort of form for step one. That's mean we're going to add more form for step two, three, four, and five. And that would be a long, long list here. So it would be a great idea to use a partial view for every single step. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm just create new five under gigs, and I'm gonna say step one, dot html dot ERV. just copy this one oops hit enter right click paste it and change it to three four and the last one five all right now for the uh, step one, so I'm gonna move this one, cut it, and inside of step one, first I'm gonna put it inside a div, and a div, it. got a class, step, content, all right, and paste it here. Now one more thing, we only um, display this uh, step one by saying, is active if the step equal one. All right, so at the moment, we don't define this uh, variable step in anywhere, but we're going to come back to that in a bit. All right, make sure that you got this one. And also inside our edit page, now I wanted to add the render for all of those. So I'll start render, hit enter, and the password should be step one. And also we're going to pass the uh, variable f. Now because inside of step one, we're going to use f from the form of this one here. So it's sort of like we create a function with the parameters and we're going to pass this one into the parameter here. So that's why inside here, you can use this f variable. And we're going to do the same thing, All right? What's that? Two, three, four, and five. All right, hit save. So here we're going to uh, quickly create a hidden field. We say hidden field tag because we need to pass a step variable. All right, and by saying as step. Okay, now up here. All right, we know that for our step. Um, so at the moment, it's the current step. So that's, it's got the style is active, all right? Just like what you see here. 
and what's happening if we say is completed hit save oh okay i can't refresh because uh, we don't have the uh step variable defined yet it will raise an error just oh okay that's fine so here you can see that right because the step we don't have a step so um, this one is only is active if a step equal one we don't have the step variable at the moment so that's why it doesn't display okay but we can check that if the complete then it's going to display this die so back here then i'm going to say you're going to display is active if the step equal one all right and then you're going to display is complete if step greater than one all right so the is completed style look like this and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the other one this one two two Three, three, four, four, and the last one, five, and five. All right, that seemed to be good for the edit page. Now let's start working on every single one of them. So for this one, we don't need this submit button so I'll just remove it just create a new fill so inside here let's create label uh, with the class of checkbox all right so inside here I'm gonna create f dot checkbox and this one bows to the head single price attribute uh, we add a class for these uh, let's say for the checkbox and also we're going to create the on change event by saying if you tick on this checkbox you just submit this form and outside here we just say head single price All right so right now again if you Go here, hit refresh, it will raise the error because it can't find the add step variable. So here because it can't find it, so he, it doesn't understand this operator. Now what you want to do, let's go back to our git controller quickly. And what I wanted to do, so inside here, uh, just quickly create a step variable equal, let's just say params step. All right. So what I wanted to do, just go back here and question mark step equal one. Oh, okay. We need to change this one to two integer because it's a string, so it can't compare to one. I right, hit refresh. All right, so I got the typo here. Let's go back to our step one. It should be check underscore box. All right, hit save, refresh. Again, typo. Head single pricing. Hit refresh. All right, here we go. This is the form that we are going to working on. And if you hit the step two, we don't have any things. But hey, look at this. This one first is say uh, this one is complete. All right, and the second one is we are because we are in step two, so it's say is active. Remember that if we are in step two, then is active. All right, and because we are in step two, it greater than one, so uh, the step one got the class is completed. All right, and we don't have any form for step two, so let's do it now. Let's go in step two. First, I'm just create a div uh, with the class step 
content and again well actually I'm going to copy this one from step 2 All right and I'm going to do the same thing for step 3 step 4 and step 5 All right just for now all right, hit save. Of course, this one I'm going to change to two. All right, so inside here, just create a class field, and inside that, just create a div with the class control. Hit enter. All right, inside here, just another div with columns, class head, text. Centered. All right. Now inside here, I'll just uh, put f dot field four, and we do to bounce with the pricings attribute, and we're going to say at gig dot pricings dot order pricing type. do p all right so inside here i'll just create a new div with a class column um yeah that should be fine just uh, keep it like that for now oh maybe i'll just uh, put it something like I'm going to check uh, is for and is offset for if the at gig dot has single pricing and p dot object is basic. Now don't worry about this thing. Just follow me, and I will explain it when we run the form. All right, and then I'm going to check. Add the class is hidden to uh, hide the form. If the add gig dot has single pricing and uh, the p dot object dot basic, it's not the basic. Okay. All right, something like that. Okay, cool. Now for the label, we just create a new label with class uh, label. And here we're going to display the p dot objects dot pricing type uh, dot capitalize. All right, we're going to display the uh, name of the pricing type. So under here, we're going to display the P object hidden field, and we're going to pass the pricing type. All right, so now we're going to control. So inside here, just pass the P dot text field, and we bow it to the title attribute place so the title attribute that's come from the pricing all right holder and we say title and the class we just added input and is radius less all right and now I'm gonna copy this one copy and this one is gonna be text area for the description and this one change to text area description and then down here just create another one control and the class it has icon right right so inside here uh, we're going to create the p dot number field and we bow it to the deli deliver re 
um, all right, and the placeholder is delivery term. All right, and the class should be uh, input is radius less. All right, and here we pass the default value to one. Okay, and I'm gonna copy this one for the price. All right, this one is for the price. Uh, price. All right, default is one, it's okay. Okay, one more thing. We're gonna add the span with a class icon dot is small uh, dot is right. And we say days, all right? The same thing for the number, uh, for the price, except we change this to dollar sign. All right, hit save. All right. Oops, I just noticed that I got some typo here. So first, uh, in a few for it's a fuse for, and also the capital line is KP to lies. And a couple of things, all right, this one is columns. All right, make sure that you got it right. Okay, this one is icons, icons. All right, hit save. So everything should be all right now. Let's go back here and hit refresh. Hey, look at this. So now we got a very nice uh, form for basic standard premium. Let me quickly explain what's happening here. We know that for a single gig, we have three different pricings, all right, basic, standard, and premium. And so the fields for helper here just uh, help us to look through all of the pricings and because uh, we here we got at gig dot pricings at order so basically we just uh, get on the pricing and order by the pricing type right we know that the basic got index zero standard got one and premium got two so that's why we just want to make sure that they display in the correct order basic first and then standard and then premium so that's why we got the order by pricing type all right and the rest would be something like um, you don't need to worry about this one for now because um, we haven't done the update function in the controller so it's not working by the time but don't worry when you go back to in the next video I'm going to go back here and explain okay so keep going with the step 3 so here I'll just change things to step 3 step 3 is quite simple we just create a new div with a class uh, field and inside here just create a label a class of label and here we say description all right and here we just pass the f dot rich text area all right this one is interesting description row we set to 50 and for the column we set to 50 all right, uh, browse 50 doesn't matter. It's got not gonna show the 50, so that's fine. And yeah, let's go back here. If you go to step three, hit enter. Rich stack area, just got a typo again. Oh no, save. Okay, so here we go. So here's what we're going to do uh, with the accent text. Now you can do something very cool, high, layer, and you can make a bow, italic, etc. All right, you even can drag and drop the photo inside here. Okay, let's keep going with the step four. So we change this one to four. Okay, so first I'm gonna get a new deep field, and inside this one, just maybe I just a uh, copy from step three copy and put it here this one is not rich text area it's a, just a text fill and this one is YouTube code let's say that 
and this one we bow it to the video auto complete we set to uh, video URL something like that and for the class is input Okay, so down below, just create another div with class fill. And again, for the label, class label. And here we say, view your gig gallery. gallery. Div dot uh, control. And inside that, just create a div with Margin bottom we set to twenty. All right. So I just want to make a comment here. So here we're going to say photos drop John. Here, all right. And then we're going to another div, uh, which columns dot is multi line. All right, and this one we set the size, uh, let's say width, we set to 100%. Just copy the comment. And this one we call uploaded photos uh, here. All right, so we just keep it simple. And for the step five, now for the step five, I just uh, add another Last week, this takes center it. All right, and we change this one to five. Okay, now div, just create a basic div. And here, when you pass the hidden field tag, which is um, active, and we set it to true only if the step is five all right so only if it's that five we're going to add the hidden field tag active true and also i'll just create strong is say two and just say almost there all right and the p tag and we say let's publish your gig and get some buyers Lowering in. All right. Nothing fancy here. Now just another one with fill dot is uh, group it dot is group it center it and also margin top. We set to twenty five. Side so control. So inside here, uh, I'm going to create a link to a uh, link to, I want to say back, which is going to run the edit gig path. And we're going to say, we're going to pass a gig object with a step, which is the step minus one class button is light. All right. Oh, one more thing. Up here, we need to add a condition. So we add the is hidden class to hide this back button if the step is less than or equal one. Okay. Now another one, which is control. So inside here, we're going to check first if uh, step is not five then we do something otherwise we do something else okay in this case we can say f dot submit and we say save and continue the class would be um, button is primary 
Now, otherwise, we're going to display a link to uh, with the text publish and the path with gig paths, and we're going to pass a gig dot id and gig be active to true. All right, and the step we could pass it is current step, and also the method it put and the data is something like okay. I'm gonna make it a break here. Confirm. Do you want to publish this gig? Alright, and lastly, I just put a class. It's gonna be button is danger. All right, cool guys. Um, I know this one is a very long video, but I really want you to get a taste of uh, what's happening here by typing your own code. Now, if you go back here, if you go to step four, hit enter. So right now we just got this one. Uh, in later on, we're going to build a drag and drop zone right under here. And for now, we just got the YouTube code text box to type the YouTube. And if you go into the step five. Yeah, so basically this is just what we want to do. Um, display text and the back button and the publish button. Now notice here that if you go into the other previous step, all right, so now we got the back and set continue button. That's come from the step five, which is this block. Okay, now we only, so this is kind of the form for every single page. We got the step content here. Remember, we got a step content here. So the step content um, is kind of the container to cover the content for each step. Uh, if you go to step four, then we turn this one to is active. So it's gonna show up the form for the step four. The other form is gonna be hidden. Okay, so now you know what's working. Cool, so the front end looks great, but it doesn't work at the moment. It's time for us to go back to the controller and work on the update process. I'll see you in the next video.